Hey guys, how's it going? Mega Lugi here, back with week two of the MPL. That's right, I said week two. We have week one behind us, so if you haven't gone ahead and watched, go, gone ahead and watched that match, I'm gonna give you some time. Spoilers incoming. You watched the match, right? Okay. So we won that match 5-0, and I was really happy about that. Excited to get a uh, to start off the season with a win under our belt. You know, week one is usually the toughest week. You know, all the nerves, all the jitters, all that kind of stuff. But I'm happy we got a win, and but that's behind us now. We have to move on, right? We have week two coming up right now, and we're going up against Reckless Bat, and his channel will be linked in the description down below. And it's my first time battling this guy, so I'm not really sure what to expect. I've heard some good stuff. I've uh, I've heard he's a good battler, and we're in for a good competitive match. Obviously, I hope I come out on top. I hope I win, but you know, that's where uh, that's where the team prep comes into play. But like I said, if you guys are hyped, make sure to drop a like. Let me know how you think we're gonna do once you see the team. If there are any other changes you would have made, and uh, yeah, how you just how are you thinking we're gonna do for the rest of the season? So let's jump in uh, right into his team. So he's got a pretty threatening team. As you can see, he's got a Mega Beedrill, Volcanion, Cresselia, Keldeo, Tyrantrum, Bisharp, Donphan, Kingdra, Roserade, Electrovire, and Meowstic. So team matchup wise, we have a we have our work cut out against us, right? I at least in my opinion, I think he has a really good team, especially to counter us. So the Mega Beedrill, this. There was a lot. There's a lot of members on the team that basically stopped us from bringing Meg Mega Gardevoir this week because, although Mega Gardevoir can uh, hit his team back really hard, it gets out speed. It gets outsped by a lot of things and one shot by a lot of things. So it's not going to be sticking around a lot for this match. So that's spoilers ahead for why I'm not going to be bringing uh, Mega Gardevoir. But his team, I said, it's really threatening, and I had a bunch of ideas of how I wanted to go ahead and. Um, face him this week like a plan of how I wanted the match to go and first I thought you know what he's got a lot of offense let me try and hyper offense him back and just bring all my offensive teams like I was gonna bring Heatran, uh, Mian Xiao, he, uh, yeah, Mian Xiao, Heatran, Gyarados, Kyurem, Salamence, Mega Gardevoir and just like obliterate him and overwhelm him with pressure to prevent him from you know doing any damage back to me but then I thought that's really risky because if I don't get some kills or he brings something I'm not expecting then I could flat out lose the match in like a couple of turns so I, I I strayed away from the hyper offense but it was something I definitely had in mind next I was thinking alright let me bring straight up bulk right let me just counter this guy and whittle him down with pressure with chip damage with you know toxic status all that kind of stuff but then I said he has, he has some setup sweepers as well and if one of my mons can't handle that then I'm gonna I'm just gonna have no nowhere to go and I'm gonna be back into a wall and just my team's gonna be destroyed so I had a lot of rough drafts for this team, but in the end, if this, I think this match is going to go either one of two ways. He's either It's either going to go really fast, which means I got bodied and 6-0'd, or it's going to be more of a long match, and in that scenario, I think I come out on top and pick up the win, but we'll have to see. Team matchup this week is just brutal, and if he brings the bonds that I'm predicting, predicting him to bring, then we're in for a rough time, but hey, you know this Pokemon, and... I would say you know 70% of the match is down to prep so like I said his team is threatening if we go over him pretty quickly the Mega Beedrill just destroys my Mega Gardevoir really fast outspeeds all of my team so he can invest a lot of HP Volcanion is there and finding a switch in for, your for a Volcanion is very very hard to do luckily we do have some counters on our team and checks which can uh, keep it at bay but he does have some options to be able to hit them as well he has Cresselia Fat, fat duck. It's going to be so hard to take this down. I only have one dark type on my team being Skuntank. And, and obviously not one of the hardest, hitter, hardest hitting um, dark types. So I got to make sure I can prevent him from going for a sub. Status it before any before it gets out of hand. And starts to set up Calm Minds and 6-0 my team. So Cresselia is a problem. He's got the Keldeo. I'm expecting a choice card for Keldeo as it outspeeds the, the whole... The, um, the uh, entirety of my team. They can hit me really hard with Scald, Hydro Pump, Secret Sword, Icy Wind. He could bring a Calm Mind Life Orb set, but I think I'm a bit more prepared for that. Tyrantrum, I'm not really expecting it to be to come. Of course, he could bring it with a Dragon Dance or a Choice Scarf because, you know, Head Smash, Outrage hits really, really hard. He could bring a defensive set with Rocky Helmet, but I don't really think that's too viable against my team. He's got the Bisharp, which is a huge problem for my team, and one of the reasons why I didn't bring uh, the Mega Gardevoir because even Max Defense, Max HP Bold, Scarf Iron Head just knocks out my team, and that's just jolly. Sucker Punch, priority, really good against the rest of my team, and he has a Defiant ability as well, so my two Intimidators being Salamence and Gyarados. 
gotta watch out for that and play a bit safe, you know, throughout the match. Make sure that thing doesn't get up to, uh, doesn't get a free plus two on me and just there, if that happens, my team's swept. So, gotta watch out for the big sharp. He's got the Dawn Fan, Rock Setter, Rapid Spinner, Electric Immunity, really good mod on his team. I'm, I'm pretty sure this thing, this thing is gonna come. One of the, uh, one of his premier hazard setters, he does have Bisharp, he's got Stealth Rocks as well as Tyrantrum, but I'm pretty sure Downfine's going to be coming and setting up rocks. He's got the Kingdra, don't really expect it to come, but if it does, I do have ways around it. He can run it as, you know, the uh, Focus Energy, Sniper, Crit Dress set, or the Swift Swim, Choice Scarf, whatever he wants to maybe. It could be physical, could be special with Draco Meteor, Waterfall, Ice Beam, so I gotta watch out for that, but I don't really think it's going to come. The Roserade, which I think is definitely coming because it puts a huge dent in my team. Combination of Leaf Storm, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb substitute toxic spikes whatever it may be uh definitely puts a huge dent in my team but i do have ways around it but i'm definitely expecting the rose rate to come probably a life orb set not really seeing a choice scarf set or choice choice spec set coming but again anything can be brought the electrovire as well electrovire is a bit of a 50 50 i could definitely see him uh reasons for him to bring it but there are definitely a lot of reasons why he might not want to bring it as well because it doesn't hit as hard as you would like but it is a really great uh check to my gyarados uh, especially if he brings a choice scarf then he's going to be able to volt switch around the rest of my team as well as, as against the skarmory but i do have ways around that as well meow stick could come as well prankster you know it's it's one of the most it is an annoying mon to face with prankster t-wave he can set up screens trick room taunt swagger psy shock psychic whatever it may be i'm not really expecting it to come but his team is just so diverse and he can bring anything and it could put in work but he has a main core of mons that I'm expecting to bring that would really put in the work against my team, but I've made sure that whatever combination of mons he brings I can uh, handle, but I have mainly prepped for the core that I expect him to bring. So if I'm going to expect, predict six mons for him to bring, I'm expecting the Mega Beedrill, the Volcanion, the Cresselia, the Keldeo, the Bisharp, and well, it's a tot, so I think out of these seven mons he's going to bring these are the seven, the most likely seven mons I'm expecting. Mega Beedrill, Volcanion, Cresselia, Keldeo, Bisharp, Dawnfan, and Roserade. Any of those combinations, you know, one of them is going to be left out is what I predict. And I based off the majority of my prep around that. But like I said, I can, I am prepared for the rest of his team. So if you look at the first member on our team, we have Wrath, our Gyarados. And he's going to be rocking Earthquake, Sleep Talk, Rest, and Thunder Wave. Max it pretty much max HP with a mix of defenses and special defense, rocking the Intimidate this week and a careful nature with the Rocky Helmet. So this is a not a very standard set for Mega Get for Gyarados, but it definitely is used and it definitely puts in the work. The Intimidate, like I said there, is going to be crucial for whittling down his physical attackers like his Mega Beedrill, his Tyrantrum, his Dawn Fan, his uh, Electrovire potentially if it's physical, but it's mainly there for the Mega Beedrill and the um, Mega Beedrill and the Bisharp before if he comes in after my Intimidate has gone off because if he comes in when I switch in my Gyarados with the Intimidate then it's pretty much GG from there so I have to watch out but the Mega Beedrill there the Intimidate really hinders it with Poison Jab I think doing a max of 40% so it's not a 2-8 KO on my Mega Gyarados and the Rocky Helmet there as well to get chip damage against um, all of his physical attackers with his you know his Beedrill going for U-turn he's gonna he's gonna uh, He's going to rack up some damage every time he switches out and all that good stuff. Earthquake, Sleep Talk, Rest, Thunder Wave. This is no Water Stab as you can see, but I don't want to be locked into Rest and then go for Sleep Talk, go for Waterfall, and as Volcano switch in and get the Water Absorb. So we have the Earthquake there, which hits everything on his team, expect, except the uh, Cresselia, but I'm not really want to stay in with this on the Cresselia as he just set up on my face with Calm Mind. So it put pretty um, utility set. Uh, Thunder Wave there to cripple his mons. If I can slow down his team, it's going to be amazing because his team is really, really fast and relies on speed. So if I can slow them down and take them out with the rest of my slower, harder hitting mons, even Gyarados, you know, Earthquake is a 2 8 KO on the Volcanion. So Gyarados is going to be really good this match. I have to make sure to keep it healthy, keep rocks off the field so I can keep it on the field even longer. So that is our Wrath, our Gyarados. <clears throat> Next up, we have a debut for our Lantern, Hal the uh, the Lantern, like I said. He's going to be having a Volt Switch, Skull, Discharge, Ice Beam, 136 HP, 168 Defense, 204 Special Defense, rocking the Water Absorb ability this week, and Bold. So, this is my check and kind of counter to the Volcanion, you know. It's really nice to have something on your team that can, you can switch into Volcanion reliably. If he brings the Choice Specs set, 
with a modest nature, then that is the only way he can 2 hit KO me with HP Grass. And I'm expecting HP Grass because I do have this, the Claydol, and the Seismitoad, which hits all of those members. So if that's why I'm expecting the HP Grass. And if he is choice specking the HP Grass, then I'm going to be able to gauge that off the damage and switch into something like my Skarmory or even my Gyarados and uh, take those hits. So, and if he's not the ch if he's not choice specs, then it nothing is a 2 8 KO against my Lantern. So that's really good to see, and I can do around 40 to 50 percent with the Discharge. I didn't. I went over. I went with Discharge over Thunderbolt this week because it does give me that chance to paralyze, and that's really really nice. And Thunderbolt only does around maybe five to six percent extra. So I felt Discharge was good. Especially for against the rest of his team like I said crippling his team and slowing it down is going to be pivotal for the rest of my team to come in and uh, Pick up the kills late game Scald pretty self-explanatory get those burns Volt switch get momentum and the last one that you see here is see here is ice beam and I'm gonna give you guys a heads up. It may not be ice beam in the battle. I haven't battled yet, but The last move is a bit of a toss-up. I don't I'm not really sure what I want to run it could be Ice Beam, it could be Toxic, it could be Icy Wind, it's uh, it could be even be Heal Bell because there's a lot of scenarios where Ice Beam matches up well. For example, if he thinks he can get a free switch in with the Roserade against me, he comes in, the Ice Beam does around 40-45%, so that's nice. I want to bring Toxic in case he wants to switch in the Cresselia and get a Toxic off on that thing and uh, limit its viability. Heal Bell in case he wants to Thunder Wave or burn my team or or toxic whatever it may be I can get that kind of uh, I can get the rest of my team healed up and icy wind in case he wants to bring something in faster go for the ice wind now it's slow down and I can proceed to volt switch discharger whatever I need to do so I'm not really sure on the last move I still I'm gonna decide on it before the battle but uh, yeah that is how our lantern Next up, we have another make another uh, debutant being Pepe, our skunk tank, rocking the Sucker Punch, Punishment, Defog, Fire Blast, mix e uh, pretty much max HP, max defense, with enough speed to speed creep, uh, speed creep a Cresselia, who has a bit of speed invested as well, and we can make sure to outspeed that as well. We have the Impish Nature and the Aftermath ability, rocking the Black Sludge as well. So the Musa that you see here. I need defog on my team, and I know he has a bishop, so I have to be very careful not to defog when the uh, bishop comes in and get a free defiant boost. But I need defog on the team because he, in case he hazard sacks me, it's gonna limit the viability viability of the rest of my team and the plan I have going forward, especially with my um, Gyarados. If stealth rocks are up, it's gonna be a lot lot weaker. So I mean, I need to make sure to uh, get rid of any hazards on the field. Of course, it's also a poison typing, so if he wants to hazard sack me with toxic spikes on the Roserade, then I can come in and um, absorb those toxic spikes right up. This is also one of my good switches into the Bisharp, as I think a knockoff does around 30% and Iron, Iron Head does around 40%, so I can proceed to deal a lot of damage back with the Fire Blast. And you see the Sucker Punch there as well, which is mainly for the Beedrill. This is also a good switch in for the Beedrill. And uh, Sucker Punch is there in case I'm in a tight situation and I need to pick off that Beedrill. It does around 25 to 30%, so that's good to see. Punishment that you see right there is mainly for the Cresselia. Now, I had Roar initially on this, or or Crunch as well, in case he wanted to set up on me and uh, with the Cresselia, and he's like, plus six, plus six. Then I go for Roar, and he's out of there, but... Oh boy, okay, this is one of the another one of the mons that I might switch, I might switch up before the battle for uh, switching up punishment. But as of right now, I'm going to stick with punishment. So what punishment does is uh, it increases by it increases its base power depending on the stat boost the opponent have. So this is my way to counter his Cresselia. If his Cresselia is at plus six plus six, he cannot Oko me with a Moonblast. And I can proceed to do around 50 or 50 to 60 percent with punishment, and it is a 2 8 KO since I am faster, so that's why I have the punishment. Bit situational, but it is uh, it is pretty risky. Like his Keldeo, if, if his Keldeo is Calm Mind uh, substitute Calm Mind, then this then uh, this set he kind of I can't really do much to him back with this set, so that's why I kind of want to roar. But like I said, it is a bit of a toss up. I don't have the perfect counter to his team. It's really hard for me to counter, so I'm hoping that he doesn't bring Calm Mind and he brings Choice Scarf or Choice Spec. So, like I said, I may switch it up bef before the battle, but this is what we're gonna go in, uh, go with right now. Can't even speak properly, man. This match has me nervous. Whew! All right, next up we have Icarus Arskamri with the Taunt Whirlwind, Brave Bird, and Stealth Rock. Pretty much max HP, max special defense with the Impish Nature and the Rocky Helmet. 
This is another counter or check to his Mega Beedrill. Whenever he wants to go for a U-turn or a knockoff, whatever it may be, he's going to be taking some Rocky Helmet damage and I can proceed to Oko uh, him with the Brave Bird as well as the Keldeo. Now, this is another Mon where I'm not sure if I want all these four moves. I I was debating taking off Brave Bird for, um, for Roost because I wanted some longevity and make sure that I can keep it around, but... Because my, my mindset was, alright, he's not going to stay in with the Keldeo or the the um, Beedrill versus me. So I'm probably going to have to Whirlwind it out anyway. But what if it comes down to a situation where it's 1v1 and I go for Whirlwind and that's pretty much useless and he wins the game. So that's why I have Brave Bird. So it's a bit of a toss up. I'm not completely sure what I want. Again, before the match, I'm going to have a uh, think about it a bit more and decide on what I want. With the max special defense, we can definitely take a Scald from a Choice Scarf, even a Hydro Pump from a Choice Scarf Keldeo, and we can Oko it back with Brave Bird, and uh, we take, I think, Knockoff or U-Turn from a Mega Beedrill is like a 4 or 5 hit KO, so uh, it's, it's, it's really good to see right here. The taunt that you see is for the lead matchup, I'm predicting him if, he's, if he brings the Dawn Fan to lead off with the Dawn Fan. We outspeed it, go for the taunt, he cannot get his Stealth Rocks up, I go for Stealth Rock as he goes for maybe knockoff or something, and then I Whirlwind him out, so that is the lead matching lead matchup that I'm predicting, so that's what we have the taunt. Like I said, I may switch out Brave Bird for Roost, or I don't know, it's, it's, it's really hard to come up with a perfect set this team, but that's why we have Icarus, our Skarmory. Coming up next, we have our Mulan, pretty much the same set that we have next week, because if it ain't broke, why fix it? Fake out, knockoff, high jump kick, U-turn, max attack, max speed, adamant with the regenerator this week instead of reckless. I I don't really want to go with rec rec uh, reckless, especially since we have the life orb. We're gonna be um we have no way of healing it back up, and I don't that chip dam that uh, chip damage is gonna rack up, especially if a stealth rocks up as well. So that's why we have the regenerator ability, adamant because at max speed level 50, we do outspeed a max speed timid roserade by one point, which is why I chose to go with adamant, and. Yeah, it's pretty much self-explanatory there from Mulan. Fake out doing a lot of damage, uh, not a lot of damage, getting me initiative as well as U-turn. Knockoff does around 40% to the Cresselia. And High Jump Kick can Oko a Keldeo, a Volcanion, and um, a Bishop as well. So High Jump Kick is really, going to be really clutch. Hopefully he doesn't have Protect on any of his mons to scout it out, but we'll have to scout out for that as well. And that is Mulan, our Mian Chao. Rounding out our team, just like we did last week, we have Ares, our Salamence, and I am very, very hopeful that we can late game pull off a sweep with this uh, with this monster. So we have Outrage, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Toxic, 36 HP, 252 attack, 12 defense, 12 special defense, 196 speed, adamant with a Moxie nature, and the Choice Scarf as well. So the reason for the EV spread that you see, the 196 speed, is to make sure that we can outspeed a max speed Jolly Beedrill by one point. Now, see, even with a Choice, even with a Choice Scarf, we have to invest heavily to make sure we can outspeed a regular Mega Beedrill. You know, it's it's pretty insane how fast that thing is. So 196 speed, make sure we can outspeed that. Adamant Nature, uh, just to hit as hard as we can. With the defense and HP investment, we have a very, very small chance to live an Icy Wind from a Choice Scarf Keldeo. So if it comes that, down to that uh, end game and it's Keldeo versus Salamence, uh, 1v1 and he goes for Ice Wind. we have a very very small chance to live it and if we are a plus one then Outrage will knock him out so yeah Br not relying on that but if it comes down to it then we have a very small chance you see the three moves obviously Outrage, Earthquake and Dragon Claw uh, doing a lot to the rest of his team and the Toxic is there in case early game I bring in the Salamence and his team is still at you know relatively good HP and he wants to switch into Cresselia because he knows he can tank a hit I'll go for Toxic and then switch out immediately and he's not he's probably not going to expect that why would you bring Toxic on a Choice Scarf mod maybe I can bluff the Choice Scarf and all that kind of stuff so that's why we have Toxic and that is rounding out our team guys like I said this is a very very difficult matchup for us I am 50-50 on whether or not we're going to come out with a victory but you know at the end of the day I'm happy with the team we're bringing we're just here to have fun and uh, you know bring out or uh, bring competitive matches to our opponent so if you guys are hyped, make sure to drop a like. Let me know what you think of the team. If there are any other changes you would have brought, you know, debating on the four moves I was I had on like the Lantern, the Skunk Tank, and the Skarmory. What move you think would be uh, would work best? Of course, make sure to come back on uh, come back tomorrow on Sunday for the match. 
and support your boy Megalugia as we munch our way to victory. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're having a great day. Megalugia here, checking out. Peace.